Luke 23, verse 26. Uh, well, let's read verse 24. It said, Pilate gave sentence that it should be as they required, and he released unto them uh, for sedition and murder. Uh, was, uh, he on that for sedition and murder, murder was cast into prison, whom they had desired. But he delivered Jesus to their will. And as they led him away, they laid ho hold on one Simon, a Syrian coming out of the country, and on him they laid the cross, that he might bear it after Jesus. Notice that verse, after Jesus. And then if you go over to the book of Matthew, chapter number 27, and you'll have the same, same thing, just a little different saying in Matthew chapter 27 in verses uh, number 31. It says, after they had mocked him, they took the robe off him, and put his own raiment on him, and led him away to be crucified. And as, as they came out, they found a man of Serene Simon by name. Him they compelled to bear the cross. And then if you go to Mark's account of it, uh, in the book of Mark, chapter number uh, 15, Mark chapter number 15, and verses number 20, it says, And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple uh, from him but on his own clothes and on him and led him away and they compelled one Simon Syrian who passed by coming out of the country the father of Alexander and Rufus to bear uh, his cross so here we have a man named Simon of Syrian and he is compelled or called upon to bear uh, his cross after him now he bear the wood cross that Jesus carried Jesus carried his own cross, the cross of my sin, your sin, laid upon his shoulder. He carried that himself. Uh, he came to the garden that day, and he said, Father, if it, be will, let, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. And he said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. I think he submitted himself to bear the cross, what we call the cross of our sins and my sins. I want you to understand that. Simon did not bear the cross of Calvary. But he bore the cross that Jesus bore. The, if you'll have it, I got one made up here, the wooden cross he bare. It. Some preachers believe he didn't carry that. But according to the scripture, it says they he bare it after him. I believe, uh, I believe he bore the end of that cross. Jesus bore the weight of the cross, and he was on that end and bore the cross and followed after Jesus. And uh, I wouldn't argue with you over that. If you don't believe that, I wouldn't argue over it. But that's what he said. He said they compelled him that he might bear it after Jesus. And then it talks about there that he bore. He bore the cross after the Lord. And, uh, and so as Jesus, uh, Jesus has done been, uh, went through all the mockings and the scourges and things, and he's headed to Calvary. He's on his way to Calvary. He's under the weight. And if you study all of the, uh, uh, and I'm trying to lay a foundation for what I want to say, uh, if you study all the things about it, uh, he he done be. And if you ever studied Calvary, and see all the things he went through, but it'll break your heart. The things that Christ and the beatings and the crown of thorns and the uh, plowing of his back open and and the gnashing of teeth and all the things that Jesus went through. The Bible said, I think it's in the book of Isaiah, that his form was as the image of not even a man. And you could even tell he was so mingled and beat all because of my sins and your sins sins of the whole world is laid upon him. That was his cross, bearing uh, to Calvary. And as he, he, he lay, as he went to Calvary and going up Calvary's hill, he's bearing a cross. He's got that cross laid upon his shoulder, and he's bearing up there. And the Bible said they compelled Simon to come and carry the other end of that cross. Personally, I believe he did. If you want to argue over that, that's your, I wouldn't waste my time arguing over it. But, uh, but he did, and I, I think he did carry that cross. And I want to push tonight on the benefits of bearing the cross or the unexpected cross. Sometimes the unexpected cross comes in our life. You ever heard anybody say, well, I'm bearing a cross. I've got a heavy cross or heavy load or I'm going through a lot of things. And you ever heard somebody say, you know, they're sick or they got problems or they got, they got, uh, I heard one lady had a, had a kid and and uh, had some problems with the kid in, in, in you know, physical problems. He said, this, Richard, this is just our cross that we, we have to bear. And, uh, you know, in living for God, there's a cross that we must bear sometimes for the Lord. It's not always easy. Uh, the songwriter said, must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? 
No, there's a cross for everyone, and there's a cross for me. And sometimes the things that comes in our life is for a reason. We're helping bear the cross of Christ. I hope I can get you to understand what I'm trying to say. And uh, we, we have to do that and bear the cross and bear a heavy load. Uh, it, it's just like some, it seems like some preachers, they, they just struggle the whole time in the ministry, go through things and hardships and difficulties in their life. And in some others, sometimes some preachers just seem like they just breeze through everything. And some missionaries is like that. I think about missionaries. They they bear the cross, and I'm not saying just because this brother's here, but that's a real cross to bear. You leave your family, you leave your country, you go to another world across the seas, and, and you bear the cross of their uh, difficulties. It's a whole different culture. The brother was telling me about some of that today. A whole different world that we bear, but we are to bear the cross for Christ. Now let me read you some more scripture. Now that was about talking about the cross of Christ. But let me read you some scripture. In the book of Mark, chapter number 8, in verse number 34, uh, the Bible says in that verse of scripture, he said, and when he had called, Jesus had called the people on him with his disciples, he said, whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. That, that, that's not talking about Jesus' cross. That's talking about your cross. Let him take up his cross and follow me. Matthew chapter number 16, Matthew says uh, uh, pretty well the same thing. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24, Then said Jesus unto the disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross, and follow me. If you go over to the book of Luke, uh, his, uh, his version or his words is the same. Luke chapter number 9, I believe it is, in verse number uh, 23, it says, uh, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. So every one of us has a cross to bear. Just like Jesus bore the cross for our sins and for the sins of the whole world. And when you get saved, every one of us has a cross that we have to bear. Uh, in our life, sometimes it's different things, different ways that we have to go and do things. I, I thought about a verse of Scripture, if I can find it, in uh, verse uh, 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 2 Corinthians, I believe it is, in chapter number 4. It says in that verse, always burn about in the body, the dying of our Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be manifested in our body. For we, we which live are always delivered unto the death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be manifested uh, in our flesh. Uh, we also always were to bear the marks of Christ in our hearts and in our lives. Everywhere we live, we're to bear that and let Jesus shine in our life. And so uh, there's a cross that we have to bear in our life. And I thought about uh, the, the unexpected thing in life. Simon, Simon was just on his way. He was just on his way. He was coming to town. If you read it, he was coming to town maybe to take care of some business. Some folks think he was coming in maybe to pay his taxes or something like that. And he was just coming in. And there he had no, no clue what really what was going on. And as he come in there, the Bible said they just uh, they they come out, they placed the cross upon Christ. He's got that, and he's laid upon him. He's coming through there. He's all mingled and battered, and all the things of Calvary. He's headed up Calvary's hill, and here comes Simon down through there, and uh, they just picked him out. Said, "Hey, Simon." Uh, they they may not even call him by name. They just said, "Hey, come, come." And he came and chose him to buy the cross. Simon had no, he was not expected. When he left home, he probably thought, man, if you'd have told him, when you get up there, you're going to have to buy the cross. He, he probably said, man, you're crazy. What cross? But when he got there, he was unexpectedly called upon to buy that cross. And sometimes in our life, the unexpected comes in our life. Sometimes there's things comes in our life that we have to bear. Sometimes we have to go through things and hardships and difficulty. Sometimes I think, Brother Missionary, a whole church has to go uh, through sometimes hardships and difficulty. It's a cross that God, that's a weight that God has laid upon them that we have to carry and we have to work through and labor through. Sometimes, sometimes uh, uh, it may be past sins in our life that has happened in our life. I know Jesus forgives us from all of our sin. It's just like David. David committed adultery and murder and all those things. And he got forgiveness and God used him after that. But always, every time you mention uh, him, it's the first thing some people will say. Well, didn't he do this and do that? And they'll point out the bad things in his life. That's a cross that we must have to bear, my friend. That, but that past that we have sometimes, it seems like it just never goes away from us. You understand what I'm saying? And there's a cross. Sometimes there's sickness that comes 
in our life. There's some people just sick, and you don't know why they're sick. They're just sick, and and uh, some people just they they they're just always sick, and they carry that load. I, I think about I know people. Uh, one lady over in North Carolina, she laid in the bed for years and years and years, and laid in that bed uh, and couldn't go to church, couldn't get up and go, laid there sick. And my friend and was down, and she had a and she bore a cross over there because she wanted to go to church. She loved to live for God. And you know what? She put God put her over there, and I went by there one day to see her uh, with the pastor that I was in a meeting with. And and I went. We went over to encourage her, but we left shouting. Amen. She encouraged us. She had a prayer list, and she said, "Brother Goodson, I can't go to church. I can't function and go no more." But said, "I lay right here," and said, "I got a prayer list." And she had a big old long prayer list, and she said, "Can I put your name on it?" I said, "Yeah, put it on the top of it, run the top of the list." And you know, and you know, and I thought, man, here's a lady that that's a cross to bear. That's a cross to bear in her life, uh, my friend. That she uh, could not function like we do, but God had her laying over there praying for preachers. And she had Brother Mays Jackson's name on her, my name on there, Brother Sammy. I, a lot of different preachers and missionaries and, and she said every day, every day I go through this prayer list and that was a cross, a hardship, a difficult place that she had to bear. And every one of us, we have crosses that we must bear in our hearts and our lives. And sometimes, you know, our goal is to get out from under that cross. <laughs> How many times we pray, Lord, heal me. Well, it, but you, are, you know, what you need to pray is the law will be done. Amen? Uh, sometimes God can use you more sick than he could if you'd well. If you got well, you might backslide and get out of church. <laughs> Amen. Uh, some people said, Preacher, I need a better job. I can make a whole lot more money. Well, God knows how much he can trust you with. Some of you made more money, you'd quit church. You'd go to gambling and go to casino and everything. You'd just go crazy. Amen. Uh, I prayed one time. I told Kay, I said, pray we'll win the lottery. She said, we don't need to win the lottery. You'll buy every car in town. Amen. And uh, I just like cars, amen. But, uh, uh, you know, what we would do with it and all that. And so, you know, some people, if they won the lottery, uh, did you know most people, most people that wins the lottery, if you read it and study it, I read it one time, most people that wins the lottery, they lose their family, they lose their marriage, and they lose their home, and they end up with broke with everything. Uh, and they ruin their life. And so sometimes we pray, we're praying prayers that God don't want us there. Where he's got us is where he can use us and we can serve God. And so bearing the cross uh, is an important thing in our life. And sometimes it comes in speculate, but there's benefits. There's benefits in bearing the cross. If you go to the book of Hebrews, you don't have to go there now, but the Bible talks about all those heroes of faith and how God worked in their life, and God blessed them, and God took care of them. You know, they whooped lions, and they went through lions' den, and, and they went through uh, the fiery furnaces, and they went through the floods and all that stuff, and how God blessed them and took care of them. And then he comes down and said, And others <laughs> had trials. Others had trials of Kirimalkins and scourgings, and they were stoned, they were sawn asunder, they were tempted, they were uh, slain with a sword, they wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins and destitute. There's a lot of them, my friend, they didn't have that glory in their life. But he included all of them in the heroes of faith. There's a lot of people, my friend, they suffer and they carry heavy loads and, and they, they die a martyr's death and they die, uh, my friend, and they, they, they suffer a lot of time. But God looks upon them. That, uh, and one fellow said, I guess it falls their lot. That's their cross that they must bear. And that's how God uses them and gets glory out of their lives. Amen? Sometimes God can use people in other directions. But crosses comes in our lives. And the Bible talks about how they called upon Simon, Serene, to carry this cross behind Christ. And uh, he, was, he, he, he was just kind of drawn. He just come along and he was drawn. That shows me God's no respect to person in the crosses that we must buy. The things that comes in our heart. You ever ask the question, Lord, why me? Huh? Why me? Why, why am I have to carry this cross? Sometimes we don't want it. Sometimes we try to pray to get out of it. Sometimes people can't function because they've got a cross. <laughs> Amen? Come on now. Huh? Come on, they can't function because they got a cross. It's like this virus. Some people are scared to death of this virus. They won't come to church. They go to Walmart and, and, and dollar store and grocery store and, and everything else, but they won't come to church. You know what? That cross has knocked them out. Amen. <laughs> come on now. That cross is just, you know, just cause them to be unfunctionable. 
uh, that cross is like, oh, preacher, I'm scared. Oh, preacher, I got all this. No, you know. And, and, and they got everything in, in fear sometimes grips our heart and it brings us out. And sometimes for a, a cross is laid upon some hardships and difficulty. We say, why me, Lord? And why do I have to go through this? And preacher, if I could ever get out from under this, if I could ever get out from under this load, if I can ever get out from under all this pressure, if I can get out, uh, I'll try to keep on going and serving God. Amen. Uh, uh, you know, I've got Parkinson. They diagnosed me with Parkinson a few years ago. And, and my doctor, you know, my doctor, here's what she told me. She said, Preacher, don't go home, sit down. That's what she said. She said, Don't go home and sit down. I start, th- heard the preacher say today, he got an aged orange. That's where I got all this stuff. And, and, uh, but she said, Don't go home and sit down. Keep on. What she was saying is, Don't go home and feel sorry for yourself. Don't go home and say, Well, I got Parkinson now and I can't do nothing. I can't even go. And I had preacher, I've had people ask me, They said, Preacher, what are you going to do? You got Parkinson. What are you going to do? I said, What do you mean, what am I going to do? They said, Well, are you going to start staying at home? I said, No. I can shake at the motel because I can shake at home. <laughs> Amen. I can shake the pulpit because I can't my friends sitting at the house. And, you know, you're going to do this? What are you going to do? Like, like that one lady said, surely, preacher, you ain't going to keep on going. My sister, she's that way. She said, preacher, you're going to quit. You, you ain't surely you ain't going to keep on going. I said, yeah. I said, I'll just shake her out all the way till I get home. Amen. Amen. And, 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 and that, that's just something I've got to bear. That's something i got to put up with. Amen. And, and, and one, this is awful. One fella said, one lady said, said, Preacher, you have any trouble with that parking? I said, don't think I have trouble with trying to pick my nose. Amen. I said, I can't never, I can't never get it settled down. Amen. But, but anyway, uh, you have all those things and you got all those fun. And, you know, and, and why would you quit? Because God seen fit. God know that's going to happen. God allowed it to come in my life. Why would I quit? Because I've got parks and that. Am I really, honestly, and truly, my friend, I, I have drawn closer to God because of some of the things that's gone and transpired in our life. <coughs> so sometimes the cross pushes away. Sometimes it pulls us in. And so for just a few minutes, I just want to throw this out and we'll go. Uh, first of all, the Bible says that uh, they compelled him to come and uh, bear the cross. And they compelled. In other words, he just come along. They called upon him <coughs> to bear the cross. I'm going to do that tonight. Slick, you come up here and help me out. Slick made this for me. And uh, I'm going to illustrate it. I don't use it, do it less a lot. But the Bible said Jesus is carrying his cross, okay? You get over here so I can see. <laughs> Jesus is carrying his cross. He's going up to there. And they compelled Simon Jerome to come. And, and Slick, you get that up. He, he come and he, he, he's bearing that much of the way of the cross. And it's an unexpected thing. He didn't expect that, but it's come. Now he is there. He's with Christ. Christ is going to Calvary. Christ is bearing his cross. And here, here is uh, uh, Simon uh, helping him bear that wooden cross up to God. You say, preacher, what was in the benefit? Of it? Well, first of all, I'll say he was, he was drawn to the Lord when that cross was laid upon him. He was compelled, compelled to carry that cross. Amen. And don't be laughing because I almost called on you. Amen. But, but anyway, uh, uh, he was compelled to carry that cross. You know what happened? He's over here. He's going this direction. But all of a sudden, he's compelled. He's compelled. He's drawn, my friend, to the Lord. You know what that cross does in our life sometimes? It draws us to the Lord. Some of you wouldn't pray and some of you wouldn't really faithful. Some of you weren't really serious. And you know what? Cross come in your life. Uh, Seriously, it's coming in your life. Sickness is coming in your life. Trouble coming in your life. Problems coming in your life. You know what happened? You run in here. <laughs> you had to request for prayer in a year. And you come in here. Oh, preacher, pray for me. I got a burden. Pray for me, preacher. I'm sick. Pray for me. They said cancer. Pray for me. I, 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 I got this. Or you have a baby that's born. It's not right. Or, or trouble in your home. You have an accident. And, and whatever, it comes in your life. And you know what happened? That you, you're, you're immediately, you're drawn to seek the Lord and seek his faith. I'll tell you what, if, it, if, if a cross draws you to the Lord, it'd be worth the cross. I think about Hannah in the Word of God. She had a cross. I said she didn't have no children. All the others had children. The other wives had children. That's all running around. Here's Hannah, married to some guy, no children. But you know what? That barrenness, that barrenness drove her to her knees and drove her to the Lord uh, and she was compelled to, to seek him and seek his faith. And I'll tell you what, if nothing else, the benefit of a cross, it draws us to the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Now, Brother Doug, Brother Doug, I love Brother Doug. Y'all know that. I love him together. We're just, me and Brother Doug, just like that as far as I'm concerned. And I've been with him ever since this church began to start. I was with him when he was single and uh, when he didn't have a net. Amen. 
That might be his cross. No, don't tell her that. Amen. <laughs> they edit that out right there. Edit that out right there. Amen. But amen. maybe Doug's and that's cross. Let me get out of this. Amen. But anyway, I know them when they're single and all that stuff. And then all these babies started coming along. Been with them all these years. And we love each other. And Brother Doug's a, a guy. He's happy here. The church is doing good. Everything's going well. But it could change. <laughs> it could change. The bottom could fall out. I tell you what happened. He won't be shouting too high, and I'm not. I, I'm glad he's shouting. But you know what? It automatically. If you let trouble come in here, it'll draw him to the Lord. It'll draw this church to the Lord. Amen. And so the cross, the unexpected cross. You back there. You stay with me now, okay, uh, my friend? It, it draws the Lord. And not only that. Not only did that cross draw him to the Lord, but you know what? That cross put him in step with the Lord. See, he's walking over here, but now guess what? The Lord's walking, and he's walking right straight in his steps. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to tell you, sometimes that cross, puts us in, that cross puts us in step with the Lord. Amen. It puts us right. Hey, he's right in line. <laughs> he ain't wobbling over here on the axle somewhere. He's right in line with me. And I'll tell you, sometimes that cross will line you up with the Lord. It'll line you up in his will. It'll line you up. And my friend, next thing you know, you'll find yourself right in step with the Lord. Amen. And then I'll say something else. Uh, my friend, listen. Uh, his load, his load uh, was limited. <laughs> He's not bearing that whole cross. In fact, I got the weight of the cross. He just burned the end down there. You know what? When, you, when you're drawn to that cross, Jesus is burned. Just remember, whatever you're burned, Jesus is burned a whole lot more than you are. <laughs> Amen. Whatever you're going through, whatever trouble you may be in, whatever load you're carrying, whether it be sickness or, or whatever uh, that, that problem is, guess what? You may be saying, boy, preacher, I'm so loaded. He ain't too loaded. He's got the light in. I've got the heavy end. And whatever you're going in, Jesus has got the, he the heavy end of your burden. He's carrying the heavy load of your burden. My friend, you just got the light load. He said, my burdens are, are light. <laughs> Amen. You know why it's light? Because he's got the heavy part. <laughs> he's got the light end. Amen. Remember that next time you go, you're in step with him, you're drawn to him, and you know what? He's got the heavy weight of that burden you're making. Amen. Amen. And then I'm just going to give you these things. That, but not only that, my friend, his, he, he realized he wasn't alone. He's bearing that cross, but guess what? Every time he looks up, guess what he sees? Me. <laughs> Boy, when that cross comes and you're drawn to him, and you're under that weight. And you know what? My friend, you're, you realize you're with the Lord. You're in step with Him. Every time you look up, you think, Oh, man, I've got this burden. But every time you look up, guess what you see? There's the Lord. <laughs> I'll never leave you. Never forsake you. Be with you always, even till the end of the world. I know this is a simple message, but I hope it helps you. Uh, every time you look up, you see the Lord. He's there. Boy, I tell you something. <laughs> Sometimes things that we went through in our lives and everything, missionary, you could probably testify the same thing. We look up, boy, you think, man, alive. And but all of a sudden you look up and you see the Lord working, and you see the Lord moving, and you see the Lord, and you think, man, I, what are you going to do, preacher? What are you going to do? Quit? No, I'm just going to stay in step with him. He's right there in front of me. He's bearing a part. He's bearing a heavy part. And he's going to work it out. He's right there with me. He ain't forsook me. He's still on the other end of this cross that I'm bearing. He's still on the other end. Amen. And then let me say this. You back her? Amen. Let me say something else. My friend, he, he became more aware of the sufferings of Christ. See, he, he, he was passing by. He had no clue what was going on. But when he got on that cross, he looked up there. You know what he saw? He crowned the thorn. He saw that back plowed open. He saw the blood dripping down. He seen all the bruises. And as he looked up there, he realized my friend, he realized the suffering. And guess what? He was suffering for him. He was suffering for the whole world that he was suffering. And every time he looked up on him, he realized and saw firsthand the sufferings of Christ. And I'm going to tell you what, when you start bearing that cross and you're drawn to him and you get in step with him, you know what you're going to realize? You're going to start looking and seeing what God went through that we might have eternal life, what God looked through. And our burdens, our burdens, <laughs> hey, our burdens ain't nothing compared to what he went through with us. Amen. Amen. I preached one time a message. I may preach it here. I said, you, you, can, you can tell your problems to God. And that's good. We do that. But I'll tell you what. Sometimes you can tell your problems about God. Amen. You got that? You can tell, you, you can tell God about your problems, but sometimes you can tell your problems what God is and what God can do and what God is. And as he's walking behind, as he's walking behind, he looks up there and he sees all that suffering. He sees all that bruising and battering and all the things that Christ has went through. 
I'm going to tell you what, when you realize, you know what he's you know what he'll do? If I'm bearing this cross and he's got that in, you know what, I'm going to look up there and I'm going to say, listen, he's worse shape than I am. He's went through more than I went through. He's bearing more than I went through. Amen? And it makes that burden lighter, lower, because you know Jesus is there and he's with us. Say something else. Uh, he became committed, tied to Christ. He's on the other end. He's tied with me. We're, we're tied together because of the cross. You know what? When we get that cross, we become committed and tied to Christ. Amen? We become tied to him, and we're, 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 we're in this thing together. It's like marriage. You become tied together. You become one. You know what? You're being tied together. See, see we're like one right here. When I, when I was in the military, when I was in the military, I, I actually liked the military. If I hadn't gotten messed up for it, I'd probably stay dead. If I hadn't been a preacher, I'd probably stay dead. But uh, uh, my wife said, the only reason I like the military because I like giving everybody orders. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I had moved up in the ranks and I was giving people orders, and she likes that. Amen. But anyway, you know what? This, when they'd walk and march, you remember the preacher, they'd march in step and they'd count cadence and everybody, boy, they wasn't, to me, they wasn't no more beautiful. We was going to the beach one time and down through Fort Jackson. There comes some of them cater, doing cadence, marching up through there. I just stopped and pulled old road the winter down and watched them. I mean, there's a holler, hey, whoo, ha, here, you know, little boy there right in step. I was looking there, man, tears was rolling down my face. That together is that march, ain't nothing no more beautiful than soldiers marching together and carrying down. Went to see my grandson the other day. There's a march, and some of them marching around. You know what? Boy, what about, and can't you see? Every time I take a step, he takes a step. <laughs> We're together. We're marching together. We're in this trip together. We're not alone. I'm here. He's there. Amen? And we're tied together. We're in this thing. We're, we're, we're linked up together. Amen? And I'm going to tell you what, my friend. Don't worry. When, you, when you're carrying that cross, you remember God's on the other side, and you're tied in together. He's right there with you. Amen? <laughs> is like Kay. She, I told her one time, I said, we just got married. I told her, I said, there's one thing about it. Now, I said, remember this. You'll never be able to leave me. She said, I won't ever be able to leave you. I said, yeah, because if you leave, I'm going with you. <laughs> and you can't leave somebody who won't leave you. And Jesus said, I'll never leave you. Never forsake you. But I'll be with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. He said, don't matter where you're going, I'm going with you. You know, while we're tied, we're linked up with Christ. Amen. And then let me go on a little farther. Let me say something else. Uh, he had to lay down his cross to walk away. In other words, uh, he had to lay it down uh, to go back to where he was. As long as he's holding that cross and bearing that cross, you know what? He's linked up with God. But he can't walk away. He can lay it down. Lay it down. He can lay it down and walk away. You know what? He's on his own. He's no longer tied to me. That I'm not talking about. I'm not messing up eternal security. I'm talking about in fellowship with the Lord. Uh, if he, if he, he, he's got a choice. He can walk away. You know what? There's a lot of folks that's walked away, laid their cross down. Amen. And Jesus is trying to bear that cross. You know what? It made the load heavier. It made the load heavier. And Jesus is bearing that cross. Amen. But you know what? All he's got to do is come back, come back and pick it up. <laughs> And God don't care where he's been, what he's done. He can come back and pick up that cross. You may feel like you're useless. You may feel, boy, I've done this and I've done that. I, even since I got saved, you may say, I've done this and done that. And got in church and got out of church. I don't care what you've done. He don't care. She said, my friend, he'll let you pick up back that cross and follow him. Amen. And then let me say something else. Let me say something else. He had to give up what he was doing to bear the cross. He was headed pay his taxes or he was headed to take care of business in his life and they said hey he was called upon to buy that cross he had to leave and lay down walk away from what he was doing to buy that cross you know sometimes in our life sometimes you've got to change your whole life to buy the cross amen you have to buy change the whole life I went, when I was in school, I had thoughts about this, thoughts about that. What am I going to do? You know, I always ask you, God, what are you going to do? You lie. People ask us, you know. And I had all kinds of different things I was going to do. Jesus had different plans. And I gave up all them dreams, gave all them hopes up. Jesus called me to preach when I was 16. I gave all that up. And, and I tell you what, if I could sing that, I'd sing that song, I don't regret a mile. I've traveled for the Lord. Uh, you give up. You know what? That's what's wrong with people today. A lot of people don't want to bear the cross because they don't want to give up. 
the world. They don't want to give up what they want. They don't. But you know what? Jesus said, if any man bear the cross, he must deny himself. Huh? You're no longer your own. You're bought with a price. Therefore, what? Glorify God in your body. Amen? And sometimes, you know, to bear that cross. Brother missionary, I don't know nothing about this missionary. I like him. I even like his wife. We had a good time at lunch, didn't we? Cut up, carried on. He's crazier than I am. That's bad. That's, that's saying a whole lot. Amen. I kept saying crazy things. He looked at Casey. Where'd you get him? Amen. But, but uh, I don't know much about him, but I know one thing. Somewhere in his life, you probably, in your younger's life, you probably didn't think that you was going to give up dreams, give up things that you want to do, and go live over there in the Indian Territory. 46 years been living on the Indian place over our pastor church. He probably never thought about that. But you know what? God called upon him. He gave up probably a lot of time he couldn't spend with his family, mom, dad, friends, and he had to leave and go. He's from Alabama. I didn't know God could use anybody from Alabama, but he's from Alabama. And God got him, took him over and put him in there all his years. He's been over there. You know, that's a cross to bear, leaving your family, forsaking everything, and going and bearing that load for all his years, and pastoring that church, and say, with him, getting in to the Lord, and teaching him, and working with him, and all. You know what? He had to give that up. And I tell you what, if he'd stand tonight, night, you'll probably hear him Wednesday night, he'd probably say, I don't regret a mile. I don't regret the decision that I had to make. And some of you, some of you, you know why you're so miserable? You won't deny yourself and bear the cross that God has got for you. There's a lot of people, that, young men that God would use in the ministry, use as missionaries, but you know what they don't? They won't give up. They won't give up those conveniences, no thing to go and do the will of God. Amen? There's a lot of ladies that their husband could be used if they would be willing to give up. Amen? You understand what I'm saying? Uh, it costs you. It costs you. And my friend, he had to come out from what he was. The head he'd go, he'd get, he forgot about that. And he, you know what? He ended up, he ended up bearing the cross behind his back. Amen? And I'm going to tell you what. Must Jesus bear the cross alone? And all the world go free. No, there's a cross for everyone, and there's a cross for you and me. Let me say this. He didn't ask for it. He didn't ask for it. He didn't sign up for it. <laughs> he didn't expect it, but he got it. I, I wouldn't expect him to preach. He probably wouldn't expect to be a missionary. Because Josh, you probably wouldn't expect him to preach. Amen? You probably wouldn't expect him never to leave Satan. Eight Sunday school. Do whatever. But you know what? God called upon us. Said um, and compelled us to the drawing of the Holy Spirit. Come and bear my cross. Come. This is the cross that you must carry. All crosses ain't bad. Amen. You know I thought about this. He found more than he had at that unexpected cross. He found out what he needed. He found out, my friend, his whole life changed. His whole life changed. You know, when he left there, when he laid somewhere, he, he, you know, somewhere they got up there, they took the cross and, and, uh, and, they, and he put, it, put Christ on it, put it in the ground. I don't know what happened to him. He left. You can go sit down. Go. He left. He went his way. He left and went his way. But you know what? His life was changed. When he went home, maybe his wife said, hey, how'd your trip go? You ain't going to believe it. I was minding my own business. Had my own thinking. Going my own direction. And all of a sudden, I was compelled, called upon. Yeah. Bired the cross. Uh, who'd you bear it for? This man called Christ. Going to Calvary. Uh, I don't believe he left. Hey. I don't believe he left. It's all over with. I don't believe he just laid it down and went on. But I believe he stayed there. And saw him as they hung him on the cross. Amen. I believe he saw him hung him on the cross. And they, and they think, uh, you know what? Boy, when, you, when you realize it, God lays out a cross upon you. You realize, my friend, he, he gave us that cross. But I'll tell you, he bore a bigger cross than we bore. Every time I get discouraged, you know what I do? I look to Calvary. And I realize what he done for me. The cross that he bore for me. The weight of my sin. That he didn't have to. He didn't have to, but he did. 
And you know what? He never opened his mouth. He never complained. Even those that was, that was giving him problems and those that, that sat down and watched him die, those that beat him and all that, he never, he never came back. You know what he said? Father, forgive them. But well, they don't know what they do. Oh, what compassion, what love. You know what? Sometimes we find ourselves complaining because we got a cross to bear. Amen? We complain because we have to go through a little hardship, a little difficulty. Amen? We complain. Days is hard. Come on now, help me out. What God had against me? Why do I have to go through this? How long is this going to last? And we complain. Complain. Amen. You know, we'd have made it harder on Christ if he'd have sat back there. He'd have been sitting back there pulling back, <laughs> wobbling around. So let's go this way. I don't want to go that way. I want to go this way. And he'd been fighting and pulling. Uh, I don't want to carry this. And maybe hollering, you know, up there. Hey, what'd you do? We got to, I, I don't even know you. Why do I have to help you? He could have made it harder on him. You know, sometimes the cross gets harder because we got a complaining spirit. Amen. Sometimes things that happen in our life, we just have to accept it. That's the cross that we must bear. And you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised how many, how many things that comes in our life. Let me give you an illustration. I'm through. I got a friend of mine owns a, owns a car lot at home. And, and like I said, we'll go, I like cars. I like food with cars. And, uh, and, and I got to know this guy. And, uh, he had, a, he had a, I'd go by there every once in a while and just hang out and look at new cars he got, old cars, he got old cars. And, and uh, I'd go by there and just look around. And, and he asked me one day, he said, uh, he said, preacher, he said, I, I bought two cars up in Pennsylvania. I said, you wouldn't want to go up and get one of them, would you? And I said, I said, well, yeah, I'm off. I can do that. And so another fella and me, and uh, there's three of us, we went. We drove up to Pennsylvania, picked up them two cars, we drove them back. Went up there, all night deal, and drove him back, and helped him out a little bit. Done that two or three times. Well, the main guy that helps him, he uh, he had open heart surgery coming up, and he said, uh, hey, "Well, let me just make it, let it back up a little bit." That's one guy named Dusty. His name's Dusty. Cusses like a sailor. And uh, we got the car. I never had met him. We got the car to go to Chicago, pick up the car, and uh, Tommy. Was driving and he said, Dusty said, This is the, and Dusty's been cussing like a sailor. He said, This is the preacher. He's riding with us. Dusty said, I'm sorry, preacher. <laughs> Every time he'd cuss, he'd say, I'm sorry, preacher. I mean, he'd cuss and just cuss and say, I'm sorry, preacher. I forgot you was back there, preacher. And I got to pray for Dusty. And he was wearing me out physically. I, I, I had a hard time. I'd drive all night back there and he locked okay. So I can't do this. It seemed like I couldn't break it, couldn't break the pattern. And uh, and I said, God, I don't know what's going on. One day, one day me and Dusty had to go to Nashville by ourselves. He cousin like a sailor's leg. <laughs> Holy Ghost said, now's a good time. And I said, Dusty, let me tell you about the Lord. I told him about the Lord and tears rolling down his face while we were about down in Nashville. Somewhere I'm going to win that boy to the Lord. Tommy had open heart surgery. He said, Preacher, can you come over here and stay I said, what days I'm off, I'd be glad to come today. And I'd tell Tommy, I'm praying for you. I'd send him scripture. You know what? Tommy's changed his whole life around. Backslid. He's got, got stuff right. The Lord. You know what? I didn't really want to do that. It's hard. But you know what? I've seen, and, and, and there's three other guys that clean cars up. I mean, rough guys. I can walk over and, you know, hello, preacher. All the kind of respect in the world. I was over the other day, and one of them stopped. And he said, hey, preacher, can I talk to you? Me? I said, sure. Had some problems going in his life. You know what? That was a hard place for me to be. But you know what? God had me there. And God may have you in a hard place for a reason. He may have you in that hard place to tell somebody about Christ. I got a text, and I'm not the best Christian in the world, but sometimes God blesses you. I got a text coming up the road yesterday. And all it says, is, and I know the guy, he sent me a text, and he said, it said, are you a Christian? That's what the text said. Are you a Christian? And I read that. I thought, well, yeah. I sit back. I said, sure. He sat back and said, I know who you are. 
I can see it in your life. You know what? Sometimes those hardships and difficulties and crosses we must bear, God may be wanting to show somebody himself through you. See, when they looked at Simon, you know what they saw? Christ. <laughs> He's bearing that cross, but when they looked at him, they saw Christ. When people look at our life, the hardships, the cross that we may bear, you know what? They'll see Christ in our life. Not grumbling, groaning, complaining. Why am I having to do this? Why am I having to carry this? Why am I having to suffer? Why do I have to go? Hey, he could have been doing all that. But you know what? I believe he, I don't believe he opened his mouth. But Mike, I believe he just followed the Lord and looked at him, fell in steps at him, and bore that cross. That's what we need to do. Draw on out of me. I'll draw on out of you. Amen. I know this is a different little message. Never even thought I'd preach something like this up here. But I'll tell you what, there's a cross for everyone to bear, and the world needs to see joy in our hearts. Amen? Not complaining, not griping, not complaining. Just joy in our heart as we bear that cross for Christ. I got this Parkinson. You know what I do? I make a joke out of it. I just act crazy with it, make a joke. I fall, everything else. I just go on, make a fun joke, and have a good time with it. You know, I could sit around and complain, grow, gripe, why me, Lord, everything. And you know what? I'd probably be defeated myself. I'd probably defeat myself with my complaining and griping and groaning. And some folks, you defeat yourself. Hmm? You defeat yourself because of the things you're going through. Somebody said, why do I have to go through this? Well, why not? What exempts you from going through hardship? What exempts you from having to bear a cross? Amen. None of us exempt. Amen. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.